Hello everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls 1. This is part 4 of our Curved Greatsword run. Now last time we went from the start of Sen's Fortress all the way to uh, uh, grabbing ourselves the Lord Vessel. And I forgot we have to actually place the Lord Vessel before we can feed Mr. Flesh Mustache. There. Yappy? I placed our yappy now. Can I feed you? Yeah, yeah. Talking, talking, talking. Are you ready? I am ready to feed you. Your floppy mustache out of here. It is something urgent. Let me feed you. The uh, top left, next to the feed, there's like a picture of him going. Rah, rah, rah. This is just really funny to me. I don't know why. But 5,000 souls, that's very good. And we can just get rid of all these except for the uh, Curved Greatswords because this is the Curved Greatsword run. So we're going to be collecting all of them and keeping them. But all the other melee weapons we can get rid of. Not the bows. We're going to be using the bows for two fights. Or at least one of the bows. But we can just continue getting rid of all this extra equipment. Partially for the souls, partially just to clean out the inventory. Now, normally I would skip this, but there's a lot here. So I just want to show it to you. So you know exactly where I got all these souls. Because there was no grinding in this, just getting rid of what we already had. And I said it last time, I'll say it again. We're keeping, or we're going to be keeping the set of favor. Because we don't have it set for any other run. So there would be no consequence to using it this run. Although we don't have it set for this run, so who knows. Might be there for no reason, but might be useful later on. And yeah, we can get rid of this. We don't we don't use those. We are going to keep the ring of sacrifice for a fight later though. And mm, no nah, no, nah, we can keep it. it. Might be useful for like Artorius or something later. <laughs> but now we can go on to get the final Demon Titanite. Because I mentioned that last time. And I was kind of itching to get it. And I'm sorry, what's that noise? I I was with you like five seconds ago. You leave him alone for two seconds and he's snoring his brains out. Jeez. But... Yeah, last time going through in Orlando, we got one demon tight, demon tight night away, and I mentioned that I knew how to get the final one, but it would be like too far away and not really worth it at the time because we couldn't teleport. So we, so here's where we get that final one over at. Pickle P, Snuggly the Crow, whatever their name is. God, who's dying in the background? What you do is you drop yourself a dung pie, and then you exit the game because reasons. It was probably like a technical limitation in the original, but this isn't the original. It's the remaster. Which came out after Dark Souls 3, so I don't know why. But Demon Titanite. That's the final one we need for the final upgrade of our Gravelord Sword. And with that, we're gonna be golden. Because th this thing was already at base doing amazing damage. So off to Andre. And after getting to Andre, we can give him the Dark Ember that we got. And we go down, 
5k souls, 4 for 4, and 70, 80, 90, that'd be 6. 7, 8, 9, so that, that is 29 damage. Again, sorry if I do that in a very weird way, but if it works, it works. And with that, Gravelord Sword is now fully upgraded. So that is both our sword and our shield at max level. And I figured, since we have those two upgraded, why not upgrade our armor as well? Which, because the sword takes Demon Titanite, the shield takes Twinkling Titanite, and the armor takes Titanite Shards, there's no overlap in terms of the materials that they need. And so there's no situations where I'm like, ah, I have one material. Do I upgrade my sword? Do I upgrade my armor? Uh, I don't know what to do. No, it's totally good. They all require different things. Which, when planning these runs out, I did not take that into account. Partially because... On paper, I actually had this server, which I believe takes Titanite Shards. And it was only last second, all when I was already in the run, that I was that I decided to move over to the Gravelord Sword. So this was completely unintentional. But it worked out really well. And this whole thing going on is a lot of numbers, so I'm just ignoring it. But I'm letting it play out in case you want to see, in case uh, you're interested in the numbers. But we got eight large Titanite shards. We need 16 to upgrade the full set. And the Crestfallen Merchant at the top of here, at the top of Sun's Fortress, sells them. And there's also a Baronic Knight that can drop them, so we went to go get those. And after coming back with 16, we decided to just keep on the upgrade train. And we didn't have enough Titanite chunks to get everything to plus 9. And going and doing the large Titanite shards, it was like 10, 15 minutes of farming, something like that. And also, I didn't want to just over-rely on farming. I'm willing to do it a bit, but I don't want to do it too much. So, I, I was willing to just accept that I'm not going to get everything to plus 9, plus 10 just yet. But I did have 6 chunks. Which, each piece of armor takes 4. And so I decided to do something a little different in the approach. Except I ran out of souls. Which I had... I was going to do five upgrades. Each upgrade takes 200. Five times 200. A thousand. Two enemies up there. Drops a thousand. So went and did that. And came back. And... What I ended up doing was, because the upgrades take 1, 1, 2, I decided to put 2 into the hood, into the robe, and then into the skirt. Because doing the first two upgrades on each would take 2 instead of the full 4. And... I didn't do it with the gloves, partially because I didn't have enough Titanite chunks, and partially because I'm not wearing the gloves yet. Because I don't have the... Uh, I don't have the equip load. I will soon, because they only weigh 1.2. Now, at this point, I was completely out of t uh, Titanite shards, large Titanite shards, and Titanite chunks. All I had left was two Titanite slabs, which I thought was funny. But at this point, we've got our sword fully upgraded, our shield fully upgraded, 
and our armor mostly upgraded, along with the spell stone plate ring, so I think we're ready to take on Duke's archives. So, running up here, with each run, I learn a bit more, and over time I kind of smooth out some strategies, and this is a strategy that I kind of smoothed out last run, which is actually getting into the Duke's archives, because you see there are these two boars that like to charge, and it's kind of a narrow space, but this first boar can't go outside, meaning all you have to do is just back up and then have some form of range, hopefully something that doesn't bounce off the boar's head. And then the second one up here, as you can see, this, this is a bit of running. You don't want to lure it all the way back there. So what you do is you keep running, you go to the left side, and you don't take the bonfire because you can't light it. So what you do is you take a right. Because just like the first board with the outside, second board can't reach this little area. So as long as you don't get too close, you're pretty safe. Which... Again, the thrusting attack on the Grave Lord Sword adds so much versatility. It's really, really good. Now, coming up here, there's a death. And I knew this. And so I wanted to get rid of as many souls as possible. Because I didn't want to lose them. I didn't want them to go to waste. But, pull the lever, and up we go. And going through, in case you don't know, a great sword and a medium shield is like my go-to standard setup. So, I am I was very aware on how to take this out. Which, that's why I do these single class, like these single weapon class runs. Because I want to get very familiar with each weapon class, with their strengths and their weaknesses. Because the more you rely on something, the more intensely you understand it. In every situation, in every form. And so that's why I do these. Because I want to have that knowledge. Now, here's where the death comes up. Which, 11.9k. Well, that's a decent chunk, that's like half a level. But then, I remembered, in the painted world of Ariamas, I got a ring of sacrifice. Which, normally I sell these because I don't like them, because I don't like consumables. I don't like one-time only things. But I actually forgot to feed it to Frampt. Which helped me in this case. So, this is a scripted death. You're supposed to die here, so I don't count it as a death. But if you want to, because there's like out of bounds stuff you can do apparently. Ooh, that's good damage. But if you want to break the game, you can technically skip this. Apparently. So if you want to count it as a safe death, you can, but. It's scripted, it's supposed to happen, so I don't. But I was happy to remember that Painted World of Ariamas ring. Very nice. And bonfire lit. And this is when I realized that it was half a level and went, oh, yeah, really glad I kept that now. And then punch two damage and they died that is the worst guard in history like the tutorial enemies do better than that come on and loud noises but i can skip you and you get out of here no jumping attack you mongrel evil bad snake man but we pull the lever and that gets rid of the loud noise. And that that should have hit me. 
let's be 100% right now. That should have hit me. But we'll take the wins where we can, I suppose. And I, another thing that I kind of refined, smoothed out last run was learning how to tackle these cells. And what I've learned was you want to start from the bottom and you want to go through the odd numbers because with the first one, well, there's an enemy here and they just kind of decided to stand there, which was a nice, easy, free kill for us. But that gets us the extra key. So that's one. And then you want to skip two because it's just some enemies. You don't want to deal with that. And three may look like it has nothing, but you need the extra key for it. And it gets you a soul. Which, that gives us like 2k that we can just have on us at all times. Dying doesn't get rid of it. And four, don't want to go in there. And five is our, like our cell with the bonfire. So, start from the bottom, do the odd numbers going up. And here, the enemies here do a lot of damage, especially when they get buffed. And so I was really considering going with vitality. But in the end, I went with endurance because I really want to finish off being able to wear the entire set. So, coming up to the top, we can leave it. Ooh, getting those items takes a lot of, a lot of damage to your ankles. But something kind of funny happened here. So, I, I wanted to play this out just so you can see, which I thought I saw something, but I couldn't take the time to actually look at it because guy with a bow, which I've been practicing parrying, like especially if you watch the beginning of this run in part one, where I did really get good at parrying and be flawless at it. But these enemies have very weird attack timings and a shield bash that I don't think you can parry, so we decided to take it slow there. But above my head here, there's something. And at first I thought it was like a smudge of dirt on my screen or something. So I decided to like move around a bit, move the camera, and it moved with the camera, which means it's not on my screen, it's in the game. And I don't know what it is, so if you know, I, I would love for you to tell me. But that's uh, just something weird that I saw. And oop, one shot. It normally takes like two to three shots for me to kill those guys in the previous runs. So again, that just goes to show the power of the Gravelord Sword. It's so strong. And then continuing on, we decided to take take on the Crystal Golem, which that should have hit me, but whatever. Because we want to, by the end of the run, that took half our health. We want to fully upgrade the entire armor set, which would take four Titanite slabs. We have two, and if we do Siegmeier's quest, we'll get one more. Which means we'd only have to find one more after that. I, I don't, it wasn't, I must. Which, just getting through all their dialogue. Oh, you wouldn't. Because quest. Oh, goodness, Robin. Oh. Which, if we really can't get our hands on another one by, like, finding it, then we can grind it. But I would like to avoid that if possible. But we only have four Estus, and there are the clams coming up, which the clams are harder than Seath, so they feel like the real boss. 
So we decided to head back because I want to fight them at full capacity. And nope. So I'm just going on through. We drop down here and I heard something behind me. So I turned around and there's this little alcove with these guys. Which I was only able to get one, but that's fine. New knowledge is new knowledge. And hello. So he dropped down, which I was not expecting, but he also can't get into the into this little alcove thing. So free, easy kill. Which will be good if we need to come back here in case we die. Which Let's be honest, Seath is not going to kill us. If anything here is going to kill us, it's either going to be this walkway or the clams. Because given enough time, I could probably kill Seath with my bare fists. I don't think I can kill gravity with my bare fists. I don't think I could kill gravity with a tactical nuke. It's just too powerful. But getting through that... <laughs> scary walkway uh now comes the clams a thousand times harder than seath for a million different reasons which don't attack me out out that's half our health part you're mean why would you do this leave me alone but thankfully we found that if you back up enough, they can't get past these two rocks. And also, curved greatsword is very good. Stun with every attack and three shot, which on the next enemy I found that two handing, we two shot him, which was nice. But getting to the end, for the boss, we take off the shield because you don't use the shield against the Seath, that'd be weird. We put on the still spell stone plate ring, and we are coming in with three Estus, so take note of that. And with that being said, I will let this fight play out. Victory achieved. I don't know why they didn't do their big AoE attack, but... Hey, whatever. Bonfire lit, free 60k. And... That's a nice little walkway with the fog on either side. I, I wish... Seath was a bit more dynamic. I wish they were a bit more complicated. Because they're way too easy, they're way too simple. Feels very weird, but... Whatever. Grave Lord Sword plus 5. Dingy Hood plus 8. Dingy Robe plus 8. Bloodstained Skirt plus 8. Chloranthi Ring. Spellstone Plate Ring. And no sips of the Estus Flask. We came in with 3. We have 3. We didn't even get hit. 
and we beat them level 62 with 30 vitality, 39 endurance, 24 strength, 14 dexterity, and 11 resistance. And we beat them first try. And from here we put our shield back on, we move back over to our normal rings, and I wanted to... I wanted to be able to light roll at a nice, even 40 endurance. Didn't work. And so I decided to do a little bit of testing with, like, specific weight counts. Which I accidentally put on the Maiden Hood. Because... They look very similar. And I just wanted to do a little more testing to see exactly how much we were missing. And here's when I realized I accidentally put this on. Which I decided to just look at the Maiden set compared to the Dingy set. Because they look very similar. Like, the hood and the skirt look very similar. And they also weigh just about the same. Like, the hoods weigh the same, the gloves weigh the same, the skirts weigh the same. The gloves look a little different. Well, the gloves look different. The robes look different. But outside of the robe, th their weights are the same. And so they're just very similar sets. Besides the color palette. Which, I thought that was neat. Nice little attention to detail that they have. But, we had two levels, I felt like we needed two more levels, so... That's what we went with. And, yep, we can now light roll. No hobbles are needed. At 42 endurance. So we can have our sword, we can have our shield, and we can have our full armor set. So we're fully set up now. Just one Lord Soul in. Which, our gloves are slightly less upgraded than the rest of the armor. Which, is gonna feel a little off, but it's fine. It's really not a big deal. Like, the only thing it's really going to affect is me saying what equipment we have on at the end of each boss because I'll have to go through each piece individually instead of just saying the dingy set plus eight but that's fine I can deal with that and we head on off to Quelag's domain because I wanted to do demon ruins and bed of chaos and whatnot next and part of that that we've come to adopt is giving the fair lady 30 humanity which we gave her 4 and we had 1 so we popped 25 and I gave her 25 just in case I'd accidentally given her 5 before instead of 4 and just forgotten but I had not so we give her the final one get chaos storm which we're not going to use that but that's just an indicator that we can now open up the shortcut to save Solaire. Because we're probably not going to summon him this time, but I want to do it just because it makes me feel good. So, yeah. And while going down here, we look at some undeniably amazing enemy placement. I don't know why they did this, but they did. I feel like they could have moved one or two of them over here but I don't know maybe that's just me but here we decided to fight the Capra Demon which we still haven't fought the boss the Capra Demon but hopefully they're that easy which we haven't fought them because normally we only fight them to get the large ember but that's for weapons we don't need that so we've been able to skip them up to this point, and we're going to continue to do so. Not for the rest of the game, we're going to fight them eventually, but yeah. 
And here we decide to look at some more impeccable enemy placement. I feel like they could have placed one or two down there at the bottom. But head on down because it's an easy way to skip all those enemies. And I mentioned before that I was going to use the longbow for two fights. And one of them was supposed to be Lutrec, you know, Mr. Goldie. But that didn't work out. But I like to stick to my word as much as possible. So I said two fights, we're doing two fights. Which I don't like these things, I don't like fighting them. Which is the main reason I did it. Which, easy kill. Easy, easy kill. And we're close to a level, so we can go kill one, maybe two enemies to get that. And after going, leveling up, and heading on back... Oh, that's a two-shot. Two-handing, it's a one-shot. And that's just what I'm used to. And coming down here, we don't want to push up too far because we don't want to aggro too many enemies at once. And we especially don't want to aggro the big guy with the small guys, but he's a running. Really love the, the designs of these guys. But fighting them feels weird, because if you have a strength-based weapon, they die in like two to three hits. And they get stunned halfway through. So all you have to do is dodge their first attack, which is pretty easy to dodge. And then they just die instantly. But if you're using a dex weapon, then they're a legitimate threat. Which feels very weird. There's this massive gap between strength weapons and dex weapons in this game. And... I mean, I'm normally naturally a fan of strength weapons. So like, yay, but also I really like player variety. So not as yay, especially since I'm going through every weapon class, meaning I have to go through all the dex weapons. Now, I don't fear these guys. However, they're on a small cliff, which I fear gravity. And, wow, he just took that, didn't he? Huh. So I tried backing him up to more stable open ground, but he didn't want to fight, so... Yeah, I fear that. Now, normally I skip over this whole section, mostly because of that. But, I want to go through and get all of the embers this run to get the achievements. And there's an ember here. But, like I said, I don't enjoy fighting these things. There's no incentive to fight them, really. And so, I'm not. They're just a drain on your resources. So, no, I'm good. But... Having gotten the ember, we can run on past. And I wanted to do a little experiment here that would probably put Solaire in danger, maybe kill him, who knows. But I was, I had a bit of an internal debate here. It lasted a few minutes, so that's why I cut to the end. But it was just between going, opening up the shortcut and fighting these bosses. So I will let this fight play itself out.
Now, at this point, I noticed that I had procced poison. And I wanted to see if poison could just end up killing the boss. And so I decided to sit back and let it do its thing. Because why not? And it's raining outside. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I like it. If you can hear it, I hope you like it. Victory achieved. I like that. I think we all like victory achieved. And 20k. Which, again, I was having a bit of an internal debate there, but Grave Lord Sword plus 5. Crush Shield plus 5, even though we didn't really use it. So, mm, take it as you will, I suppose. But Dingy Hood plus 8. Dingy Robe plus 8. Dingy Gloves plus 6, Bloodstained Skirt plus 8, Chloranthi Ring, Wolf Ring, and Zero Sips of the Estus Flask. And level 66, with 31 Vitality, 42 Endurance, 24 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 11 Resistance, and we beat them first try. And moving on, we ignored the enemies up there. So the internal debate that I was having was last time when I saved Solaire for the first time I opened up the shortcut and then went to go summon him for the centipede demon but I couldn't because he was already on the other side of the shortcut so he was already past like he was already beyond the centipede demon and so I wanted to see if we could summon him for the centipede demon and then after that, open up the shortcut without having him be killed. Which I didn't know if we could. Which trying it would put him in danger. And I, I, I was thinking about using a humanity in order to summon him. But I decided against it. And I decided to go with the risk. Because it's better to risk something that has like zero consequences for one run to gain the knowledge than to live without that knowledge and so we're going in with 10 Estus Flasks and I will let this fight this very fun fight with a very dynamic interesting beginning play out.
victory achieved. Good. The fight is weird, but... 40k. After the first part, it's fine. Now we beat him with the Grave Lord Sword plus 5, the Crest Shield plus 5, Dingy Hood plus 8, Dingy Robe plus 8, Dingy Gloves plus 6, Bloodstain Blood Skirt plus 8, Claranthe Ring, Ring of Steel Protection, and 3 Sips of the Estus Flask. And we beat them at level 67 with 32 Vitality, 42 Endurance, 24 Strength, 14 Dexterity, and 11 Resistance. And we did that first try. Whew. Let's go. Progress. And this is when we decided, before going into Lost Isolith at all, even to the next bonfire after the boss, we decided to beeline straight back here to get this. Which, I wasn't going to go straight to Bed of Chaos, because I did want to go through all of Lost Isolith, the, the items and whatnot, but I did want to get this guy, because I wasn't going to go through the entire bridge and past the Titanite Demon to get that. And then here, we notice Solaire, which... Hi. Is it all a lie? Have I done this all for nothing? Oh, my dear son. What now? What should I do? My son. My dear, dear son. I don't know... Like, was he there as soon as we opened it? Was he there as soon as we killed the, uh, like, sunlight thing? The little screen guy that dropped the sunlight helm? Was he, did he only teleport there once we got to a certain point up the stairs? I don't know. That just kind of threw me off a bit. But seeing that he was alive and there, I felt comfortable now going to Lost Isolith and I was about to say I was about to say but off we go and you can die and let's go game this is a very polished game, by the way. But, Soul of a Great Hero. Now, that stuff doesn't really bother me. I mostly just find it kind of funny. But, it, it can be annoying. It's mostly annoying when you have to go through an area that has one of those multiple times. Like with the Bed of Chaos run back. Like that that can be very annoying, but outside of that, it, it's mostly just funny. I mean, obviously, you'd rather not have that, but... I don't see it as like a big issue, that's just like a tiny nitpick thing. But again, it doesn't really bother me. It's just kind of funny. So... A little bit of good, a little bit of bad, a little bit of both. And up here, we fight them. Which... I mean... Give them more health. Make it to where they don't die into hits, but... Give them, like, 70% of the Demon Fire Sage's health bar like 70-75% of their health bar, and just make them the boss. They'd be so much better than Bed of Chaos. They'd make for such a better boss fight. Like, unbelievably so. It, it doesn't matter if it would make less sense. It, it doesn't matter if they would have to change some things around. It would have been so, so much better. 
have like a normal pyromancer than whatever nonsense bed of chaos is. But with that out of the way, uh, we can leave you alive. You're not bothering us, so we can go through here. And hello, Sigmaya. And we're going on through here. Which I think this area is very neat. With just like the different verticalities and how everything intertwines. I, I think it's a good little like sub subsection. But before we go and talk to Siegmeier, there's this death pit, which I think these were intended to catch players who were just like running around corners without looking. But I follow the mantra of it's Dark Souls, take it slow, check your corners. And so that kind of stuff typically doesn't catch me. But I'm very fond of using traps that are meant for the player against enemies. And this is another good example of that. Lure the enemies away. Lure them back here. Lure them down into the death pit. Because, I mean, hey, what are they going to do? And I tend to leave one alive. Just... Like, like, just for Siegmeier. And then we can run back up. And then talk to him, and then we can let him take out the last one. Because apparently there are multiple endings to his quest. Which is very neat. Excuse me, but... Just get through all of his dialogue. But I just find this a good way of, like keeping him alive and having a funny way of letting you see enemies die which two shot nice now grabbing the items and talking to him yep 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 again just to make sure and while we are down here to get items and souls and his quest we're also down here to get upgrade materials. Because we're not going to use it for any of the weapons that we're going to be using. But. Apparently you can use that hole to drop down. But I don't know where that hole is. But. Red Titanite Night Slab. Useful for the achievement that we're going to go for. But. We come back. Ready to take on the boss. And so we slide down. And, uh, again, this, not a fun boss, not a good boss. I mean, outside the spectacle of going down a very long slide, this, like, very symmetrical boss, outside of that, the boss doesn't really have anything going for him. Outside of, like, maybe the idea and the lore, but... Nothing. But we decided to go back and play as it. This boss is supposed to be about the threat of gravity, but they attack very often and do loads of damage. And so I decided to just say, screw it, I'm just gonna homeward bone out. I'm not taking a death. Which, I realized, hey, that's a really good idea, actually. Because, normally we die and then we have to do the run back anyways, but... If we just homeward bone out... We have to do the same amount of runs, but less deaths. And so we come back... And we run on through... And, again... The, like hand swings do a lot of damage and come very frequently and so I was too busy staring at the hand that I forgot the ground 
so that ended up killing me. So that is death number one. And we head on back. And we pick up our souls. Which that's nice. And this time I make sure to take it a bit slower. Actually keep an eye on the ground. Keep the shield up. Because the shield is very important. And we'll punch. And homeward bone out of here, because no. Nah, we're not dealing with that. And time to run back again. And landing down. Mind you, each run back is like two and a half minutes. And okay. Each run back using the shortcut, by the way, is like two and a half minutes. Now, I made the mistake of thinking that down here would be safe. And so I sipped up, which means I'm at full health. And I decided to move over to the flamestone plate ring to protect me against the fire attack. But at full health, with the flamestone plate ring, the fire attack still one shot, so... That's a thing. I understand we're not wearing the most defensive set, but... Again, flamestone plate ring. And it's a mostly upgraded set. But... Uh, but uh, whoa, 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 hey there. I've never seen that attack before. I, I've never seen you do that. Or at least I don't think I have. I understand this is only my, like, fifth run, but you can't be doing that. You can't be throwing new moves at me five runs in. Let's, uh, let's just clear that up right now. And I thought I was dead there because of the screen. I thought that meant fire attack, but apparently it didn't. So, we punch them, and victory achieved. It doesn't even feel like a victory, this boss is awful. But, whatever, 60,000. We sit down just to be safe. And, again, I'd rather have like a Taurus demon or I, I, I would take two Taurus demons over this or again just like a Pyromancer with a lot of health but whatever Grave Lord Sword plus 5 even though we didn't use it Crest Shield plus 5 yeah we, we just use our fist so I don't know if we even want to count that and Homeward Bones but Dingy, Ro uh, Dingy Hood plus 8, Dingy Robe plus 8 Dingy Gloves plus 6 Bloodstained Skirt plus 8, Chloranthi Ring, Ring of Steel Protection, and we're not even going to count the Estus Flask, because, no. And we did this at level 70 with 35 Vitality, 42 Endurance, 24 Strength, 14 Dex, and 11 Resistance. And normally I count the amount of tries that it takes, but I'm not going to do that here. We took two deads. I'm, that's just how I'm going to count it. Just, we died twice. And I'm going to leave it at that. And then, because we no longer need the Fair Lady, kill her to get the Firekeeper's soul. I'm sorry. I know it's evil. I, I know bad I evil. You, monster. I, I know. But I want the Firekeeper's soul. And then the, the Dunsons weren't very happy with that, and I got pelted with a boulder for it, which, understandable, I'm willing to admit I'm in the wrong here, I'll, I'll take that, you can live for that, but, Firekeeper Soul is good, I like having more heals per heal, so, continuing on, and we go to finish this quest, because I didn't want to end it on a bad note, and we get a Titanite Slab, and... Uh, don't look at this. And so, don't worry about that. Nothing happened there. Definitely nothing. But here, we took down two of the Great Lords. 
and uh, we got good progress. We were able to put on our entire setup, and we're able to just enjoy the scenery with the dystopian smog sky and the black water. But don't he's not dead. Don't worry about him. He's just sleeping. Don't worry about where his daughter went. Doesn't matter. But uh, yeah.